Last night I was sitting on the couch and I turned to my wife and I said, you know, mansplaining is just short for man explaining. Did you know that, honey? <laughs> I expect the lawyers to call any minute now. Hey, got to start out with a good joke, right? Well, I don't have any good jokes, so that's what you get. What is happening, my friends? Welcome back to the channel. It's another exciting ride home with your old buddy, John, as I get creamed by this truck whose lane ends in like 100 feet. Guess what? I am in too good of a mood to get upset by that. We are just gonna meander home. I could have ridden on the highway, but I chose not to. I am done scouting locations for my videos. <laughs> you know, I'm commuting to the office more now, and well, you know, heck, it's, it's just a lot more comfortable to do it on these back roads, even though there's a lot of bumps and stuff. I just enjoy the hell out of not being on the highway sometimes. Boy, it's freaking windy. But we got about 10 minutes together, and I want to talk to you about video production. And not the things that I do or other motor vloggers do, but some of the fascinating tidbits I've picked up over the years studying videography. Oh my God, this wind is ridiculous. Hey, if I'm posting this, you know that I'm willing to ride through the wind for you. <laughs> oh my God, I am hopped up on caffeine and got a dead brain to go with it. It's wonderful. Been at work all day, but uh, I always save a little coffee for the ride home. Gotta, gotta keep the energy flowing, am I right? I'm right. Everybody knows I'm right. I don't wanna indicate that I'm going to make a right there. I'm gonna make a right up here. We're gonna scoot over here. We're doing a moto vlog on the street glide today. And it's so much fun to ride a bike to work. So what tidbits have I picked up? One is, one's an easy one. All right, we'll throw this one out first. The first one is, if you're watching a TV show or a movie, and they're not using a gimbal or some sort of stabilization, they're using a handheld setup, then you know that they are trying to impart upon you that there's uncertainty in the main character in frame. So I was talking to Dewey Rides. We were talking about the way different videos are shot and filmed. And I was talking to him about an episode of The Lincoln Lawyer on Netflix. And I was like, yeah, you know, I picked up that they're doing this really wonky 3D text glued to a building thing trying to make a building look like something it's not. Uh, and I do that in my videos, you know. When I do a mail call, I stick the uh, I stick some text, the P.O. box number, on the U.S. Postal Service building. And I just think that's a neat way of adding a little pizzazz to my videos. Ooh. Bruh, I love the smell of fresh asphalt in the morning. <laughs> but then we got to talking about different movies and how they cut their movies or edit their movies and he was like well they, you know they did this this thing in mad max fury road where lots of fast cuts but they broke the 180 rule and that's another one is the 180 rule so from one shot to the next you keep it inside a what in the hell are we doing here folks i'm trying to record here <laughs> they do a 180 rule so the 180 rule is where you don't go more than 180 degrees from one shot to the next. So in this case, this, this camera here to this camera here is gonna be less than 180 degrees because they're, they're sort of on this plane. If I went from this one to that one, then that would be in this plane, Studio Binder. They do a great job of explaining these, these theories and, and how people edit their videos, but it, or edit their films rather, their shows and all that. And what I take away from it is you got to do the right editing, right? So if you want to keep a certain pace, and we watched um, we watched a clip from Born Ultimatum, one of the Born movies, and when Julia Stiles is in frame, the the pace is much slower, and they show her for a longer scene before they cut to the next scene. And then when Jason Bourne is in frame, it's boom, 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 big cut. But Dewey noticed that they break the 180 rule when he's in a fight with someone and they break it and I said hey there's a reason they broke it they didn't just do it because of poor camera placement they did it strategically because they wanted to show who had the upper hand in the fight at that moment so the 180 rule doesn't necessarily apply to motovlogging but some of these other things do 
where when you are editing your videos, you're trying to make sure that you're getting the content there. And if you want somebody to be able to digest the scene, uh, so to speak, you will leave a pause. And that way they understand that something of significance happened. Studies have shown that people that binge watch TV shows, they don't have the time to digest the content the way they would. Hey, look at that. 17171 odometer reading. Ha <laughs> ha, that is so cool. I like that. That is neat. I'm going to leave that in. Ooh, this wind is fierce today, my friends. Springtime in the mid little, 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 springtime in the mid Atlantic. You always chase the divine. I almost put my foot down, but I didn't. We're back on Beaver Dam Road. So people that don't get a chance to digest what they just watched, they go from one thing to the next, bing, bing, bing. They don't remember as much of it, which is why I can ride the same like five roads all the time, and it might look fresh and new to you every time you watch a road reality video. I mean, how cool is that, right? I'm using that manipulation of your psyche, so to speak, to keep my stuff fresh and new. Plus, there's a tunnel down here, and it's shaded from the sun and the wind, so it's like a concert hall, and there's lots of fun. So I hope this wasn't washed out. It looks wet, but we're going to give it some revs, right? Yeah, $3 worth of petrol. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not that much. This bike is scarily fuel efficient when I keep my... Uh, my whiskey throttle out of it. Not that I drink and ride, but that's what they call it these days, the kids. So anyway, there you've got a couple of examples of how to do things, how the pros do it. And I just find this fascinating. I watch a lot of how-to videos and studies in filmmaking. Filmmaking, that, golly, that's the word I was looking for like 15 minutes ago. Filmmaking is a very fascinating thing to me because these pros are doing it all these different ways and. Here I am, Joe Schmo on a Harley with two cameras and my coffee trying to talk to you and have a conversation with you while I'm riding a motorcycle. And there's only so much you can do. You, you know, you have the equipment you have and you have the brain cells you have and you just got to make it work. But it all comes together in editing, right? It all comes down to editing, right? Don't get me wrong. The content is always king, right? Content is king. But if you have 20 minutes of silence and then pearls of wisdom on either end of it, people aren't going to watch your stuff. Whereas I think people are more inclined to watch something where you've cut out some of the blank space and you've got the presenter presenting. In this case, it's me. So I, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> but I'm out here having a good time riding my bike. Whoa, tractor. That gravel pile keeps getting bigger and bigger. But hopefully... Uh, hopefully this has helped you out. Hopefully you've learned something today. Maybe there's a couple of new filmmaking techniques you've never heard of. If you'd like me to do like videos where I sit down and do my editing so you can see how I do it, if that might be helpful, um, let me know in the comments below. But again, thank you for coming on a ride with me. This is such a nice, nice day. 85 degrees, sunny-ish. There's some clouds rolling in, but not rain clouds. Those, those are friendly clouds. Those are friendly clouds. I, I don't even know what's in frame. I'm really just an amateur posing as a professional these days. So I'm going to steal a line from Kraken Eric. For all my end watchers, you get a bonus tip. And that is something I picked up from Corridor Crew. The first three frames after an edit, so a cut from one scene to the next, are not picked up by the viewer's brain. So you cannot show them any information until the fourth frame at the earliest. Pretty interesting. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm going to, yeah, there's the main road right up there. So I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave the video there. Something. I'm going to end the video here. And I'm going to tell you only you can prevent forest fires. And Nanny Nanny Boo Boo works as an adult. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, yeah. And all the channels I mentioned today, I will link in the description below. Go check them out. 
and uh, see if they help you out with some of your own filmmaking or an understanding of why certain decisions are made on set. Pretty cool, huh? Take it easy.